Tortilla soup, one of the most talked about dishes on the Frontera menu for 37 years. Hi everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Sopa de tortilla, tortilla soup. It is one of the classics of the Mexican kitchen and it has been on our restaurant's menu since the day that we opened 37 years ago. In the central part of Mexico, it's a rich chicken broth that's infused with a little roasted tomatoes, some uh, dark pasilla chili, but it's all about the garnishes, the crispy tortillas, the creamy avocado, cheese, cream, a little squirt of lime. I mean, it is a riot of textures and flavors and incredibly satisfying. So here is how we have made it since the very beginning. The first thing that we're going to do is to brown some onions and garlic. I've got a pan that I've already been heating a little bit here. I'm going to put oil enough to coat the bottom of the pan. I've sliced an onion here, a medium-sized onion, a couple of cloves of garlic that I've just taken out of their papery skin. Those will go into the pot and I mentioned that beautiful, dark, rich flavor of pasilla chili as being classic in the Sopa de Tortilla in Central Mexico. Well, this is it. And this one, I'm going to just break the stem part of it off. A lot of people will do this with a pair of kitchen shears. Um, I like to just go ahead and do it with a, a knife. And I'm cutting about half inch pieces off of this. Now, you'll notice that I didn't try to break it open first and get all of the seeds out because I can just kind of toss these little pieces of pasilla chili. In your neighborhood, this may be called pasilla chili. Um, some parts of the United States, they use a different name for it. They'll call it chile negro, black chili or pasilla negro. So once I've tossed it a bunch to get dislodge a lot of the seeds there, uh, put the pieces of chili off to the side and we'll just get rid of the, of the seeds there. I'm going to toss this just to make sure everything is nicely coated. This is going to take, I'm going to say about seven to eight minutes or so to get it really richly browned. That's what I'm looking for here is for it to be kind of a, um, I, we will call it a fast way of caramelizing, okay? Because I want the richness of caramelization, but I'm doing it over a kind of medium to medium high heat. Okay, these are really nicely brown, what I would call richly brown. The pieces of chili will go in there. And actually, for doneness on the toasting of those chilies, I would say use your nose uh, because they will release a beautiful aroma, a toasted chili aroma. Keep them moving in the pan. It will take only about 30 to 30 seconds to a minute, depending on what your temperature is. I'm starting to smell it now. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. Not only do we have the sweet sort of caramely onion aroma, now we've got the toasted chili. Okay, that's about right there. So I'm going to scrape all of this now into a blender and leaving sort of behind a lot of the oil, but I do want to get all the little pieces of onion out because they would burn in the next step that we have to take here. And now I'm going to add about a half of a can of tomatoes. I'm using the fire roasted ones because I think they have more flavor. Put the top on this and then we're going to make a, a puree out of it. Okay, the color of this is beautiful. Sort of a darker color because of the dark chili that's there. I don't have enough oil to say that we have oil coating the bottom of the pan and I'm gonna need it for this next step. Um, this next step might seem like an odd one to you, but I will tell you it is essential in making a lot of Mexican food, but especially this soup. So. The puree goes into the hot pan. I just kept it back over the heat, now filmed with oil. Scrape all of our tomato and chili and onion and garlic puree 
in here and we're going to cook it over medium high heat until it has cooked it down to the consistency of tomato paste. I would say going in here, it looks a lot like tomato sauce. So we want to quickly cook it down. The color of it will darken considerably, but it's mostly the consistency of it that will tell us that we have cooked it enough to bring all the flavors together, to unify them, to give the flavor to this soup that is rich and unified. Color is much darker. It is really thick now, that tomato paste consistency, that took about five minutes or so. And now we have some broth to add. You can make this with a boxed broth that you buy in the grocery store just fine. But really this is about the flavor of the chicken broth. So my recommendation is to use the best stuff that you can lay your hands on. If it's for a special occasion, take the extra time to actually make your own broth. Set that over there. And so our broth is gonna go in now. Okay, I don't have to tell those of you that are diehard cooks how to make stock or broth, but if you're not really familiar with it, just know that Mexican stock, Mexican broth, is made in a much lighter style than European. So in the European versions, you would find the carrots and the celery and the onions all cooked down and then simmered with a lot of herbs and such. In Mexican style, it's just onion and garlic. That's really all it is. No celery, no carrots. That typically go into the European ones and very light on the herbs as well. But what you get is rich chicken flavor because they use a lot of chicken in Mexico and they save all those carcasses to make good broth with, which is what I encourage you to do. If you're going to end up with a carcass of any kind, whether it's rotisserie chicken or from a raw one, I suggest that you just break it apart and put it in the freezer. Then you'll have it there when you want to make your stock. Now, back to the recipe. And just stir that until the flavorings have completely mixed into it. The last thing, which is really, really classic in the Mexico City area, is always to put a couple of sprigs of epazote. If you haven't worked with epazote, it's a very distinctive flavored herb, uh, one of the more pungent herbs, but it balances against the sweetness of the caramelized onion and the tomato that are in here. So we'll just throw those guys in there. Um, when it comes to a boil, um, I will turn it down to a medium low. I'm just partially covering it there. But when it comes to a boil, I will turn it down to medium low so that it can just simmer for about half an hour or so. So now let's start with the fried garnishes here. Um, so the tortillas are obviously the most the most elemental part of this since it's called tortilla soup. And I highly recommend not making this with homemade ones. I know people would normally think that homemade would always be better, but for frying, actually a factory made tortilla is usually better. Um, and if you can find them, like if you go to a tortilla factory and you say, I would like to have some tortillas that are used for frying, they will be coarser and drier and usually thinner than the regular table tortillas. So I have some of them here. These are the ones that we use in our restaurant that uh, we would cut up and fry for chips or do for tacos dorados, the fried rolled um, tacos. I'm going to cut this in half and then I'm going to cut the two halves in fairly thin little strips here. Um, I'm going at about a quarter of an inch now, these are easy to work with here, but if you want a really beautiful presentation, then you might want to go with full size pieces, not ones cut in half. So we've got that there. Um, but if we had a couple of them and we wanted to go really thin with these and keep them very long, we can do a really elegant presentation. So again, if you're making your own your own chicken stock for this and you're going to serve it as a first course in a really nice meal then you might want to keep them long like this because it will make a really beautiful presentation.
Okay, well, I've got oil on to a depth of, it's a little over a half an inch, and I've got it, I can see it shimmering over there, which is usually my clue that it's getting to frying temperature. And I'm gonna fry not only our tortilla strips here, but I'm also going to uh, fry the last of the chili. Okay, so I'll take these guys here and show you what they look like when they're fried. Uh, drop it in there. If it has, I don't think it's quite ready yet. If it has a real pop when it goes in, then I know it's going to be ready. So I turned it up just a little bit here. Yeah, now it's, it's registering what I'm looking for. And just let these fall in here. And then stir them around. And what we're looking for here, and I keep them moving all the time or they'll stick together. Um, they'll make a kind of basket like thing, but I want them to be separate. What I'm looking for here is not only a, a golden color to come, which actually comes pretty early in the frying process, but also I am looking for the bubbles to really slow down, almost go completely dormant here, and then I know that these are going to be perfectly crisp when they come out. Okay, I've got, these are look just right, hardly any bubbles coming up again. So I'll pick up those guys and put them over here to drain on paper towels. And then we'll do some more of these guys. Okay, now on to frying this last chili, same chili, the pasilla or the pasilla negro or the negro chili. And I'm just going to lay it down. Actually, I'm going to take the stem off because that's going to make it harder to fit into this pan. I'm going to lay it down in the hot oil and then fun things happen. It will start to um, inflate a little bit as we turn it in here, but it doesn't really look like it's doing anything. But I can tell you, it really is doing something because we're toasting it. And we want to toast it all the way to where we could crumble it over the soup as one of the garnishes. This will add that boldness that I was talking about that is emblematic of the tortilla soup in central Mexico. So I'm going to turn this for about, it'll, it'll take about I don't know, 45 seconds to a minute for it to completely toast through. But there's nothing that is giving me any, other than experience, that's giving me any signs that it is ready. Oh, I'm going to say, yeah, this is about ready now. Okay, now let's talk about our garnishes. Okay. We've got some melting cheese here. You can use anything from your Monterey Jack to a mild cheddar for this. Colby, something like that, easily meltable. If you're in Mexico, you'd probably use the Chihuahua cheese or the Manchego, what they call Manchego there. Um, something that's light, not too strong in flavor. Um, we have uh, the avocado, which I, to me is really essential in this. And even though I'm not much of a fan of hot avocado in this soup it works absolutely brilliantly Mexican crema if you're going for something that's so memorable use I would say the French creme fraiche you can buy it in lots of the specialty grocery stores these days because it has the richness of flavor you would find in the cremerias in central Mexico what they would just call crema del rancho I have a cut up lime here um, some, some chicken you can buy a rotisserie chicken for this in fact you could buy a rotisserie chicken and then make a stock out of the carcass of the rotisserie chicken and we're going to add this um, this isn't quite ready ready yet, but a couple minutes before the uh, soup is ready, I will put the chicken in there and we will heat it all up and then we'll build a classic sopa de tortilla for you. Okay, we've got our simmering soup here and I'm going to add the chicken to it, but now we have to talk about seasoning here. Um, the 
This broth that I am using is fully seasoned broth. Sometimes you go to the grocery store and you get the fully salted stuff and then you really probably wouldn't have to add any more salt. Um, but if you buy the low sodium versions of it, everything's going to be out of whack until you actually add salt and bring it back into nice harmony. But I just want to double check. Yeah, I am get the richness of the roasted tomato and that chili that was cooked into it. Um, I'm getting the full flavor of the broth here because it was a homemade broth, but one that was fully, fully seasoned. Now let's talk about how to build it. So you need a bowl that's a little bit wide here. Maybe you have a pasta bowl or something like that and you wanna serve in that. The first thing that we're going to do in this is to put a spoonful of this Mexican crema. We make our own in that sort of creme fraiche style in our restaurant, so that's what I'm putting in here. Now, a handful of the melting cheese over that. And then a slice of avocado. So I like to just use the side of a spoon to slice in up against the the edge of the avocado, the skin of the avocado. Put a couple of slices in there. Now, the next thing, we can use the thicker, shorter ones. They work beautifully in that, and it's certainly a lot easier to make. But I'm going to show you what these more angel hair-like ones look like. So this one, you'll want to stand up like that in the, in the bowl a little like pickup sticks here. Um, so you've got a kind of more dramatic um, look to it. Take the, the little chili that we toasted in the oil and crumble that over the soup to give you the, the bold little flicks of flavor there. And then the last thing that we'll do is to top it now with the with the soup and I'm going to, you could take the episote out of this before you serve it so that you don't have to worry about that. So I'm just pouring the broth of the soup in and around all of that and then I'll put some of the chicken around that and there you go. You have that classic tortilla soup there in, in a presentation that I think could go on the most elegant tables. I will tell you the flavor is so classically Central Mexican, the coming together of Spanish culture and indigenous culture to create one of the world's great soups.